Clearly reflected, and you will not have a good vision. The problem problem will be coming because there is a small opacity on the cornea. So that is how we will see that adenoviral conjunctivitis will produce adenoviral keratitis. Or there is no uh, ulcer, but it's always a epithelial keratitis. SPK, the SPK one you will not get subepithelial keratitis. So there will be haziness of the cornea, surrounding haziness. So the vision will fall. So in that such cases, we'll have to carefully treat the, uh, for adenoviral infection. The best treatment now available is uh, artificial tears. with an antibiotic to cover if there is no so, superadded infection because of the uh, compromised cornea. Then parasitics. Parasitic is very, very important. You know that their exposure to uh, contaminated water, canthamoeba keratitis is very, very common in case of uh, contact lens virus. And uh, it is very, very painful condition. Remember, it is not like bacterial uh, corneal ulcer. A canthamoeba keratitis can produce a ring ulcer, a typical ring ulcer, and then it is very painful, very painful. So, what are the signs and symptoms? So you know that there is a breach of the cornea and then pathologic character by edema and cellular infiltration. And then bacteria cornea is atmosphere, I told you all this. So local ocular defense mechanism in GFRDS. There's some ocular predisposing disease. Host immunity is compromised and the cause of the organism is very virulent. There are two organisms which are usually, they damage the intact corneal epithelium a, a foreign body. There is a surrounding infiltrate. With the format, unless you remove this foreign body, it usually looks like iron one. So unless you remove this, you, you will adjacent to this, you can see the blood vessels coming into the cornea, and then this is this time frame is this. So the, there, there is a small compromise of the particular area, then the blood vessels will be attracted towards that. So the blood vessels should not go. Once you remove it, the blood vessels will automatically attract and the corneal ulcer heals. This is called acute diagnosis to adenitis. This is when this uh, sac will be there, here, and then there'll be a lobulated swelling in the medial canthus. So these are the, the stages, the different stages of uh, uh, infiltration, stage of active ulceration, Regression and cicatrization. Infiltration is that wherever there is a uh, problem with the corneal epithelium in breached, uh, the organisms will go there and get stuck. Um, this uh, will produce uh, a leukocytic infiltration around that, as you see, uh, you are seen as a grayish white shadow around the ulcer. It's called infiltration state. And then there's active ulceration. The ulcer will deepen 
it not only you know, when it starts in the superficial layers of the cornea, it can go a little deeper and deeper depending upon the virulence of the organism and absence of antibiotic. A virulence of the organism is very important because it quickly invades the very, very soft stomach tissue and it can cause active ulceration. And regression means it is when you start treating the patient or sometimes the ulcer spontaneously heal because of the immunological mechanism which is triggered and then leukocytes will come and invade and then that, that uh, whatever infiltration you see around the corneal ulcer that will come down. That is how you can uh, understand whether the, your treatment, your corneal ulcer is responding to treatment or not. See the infiltration around the ulcer cornea Therefore, if you can see lesser the grayish white area around the ulcer cornea, that means it is responding to your treatment and you can continue the antibiotic for some amount of time. If it's not responding, that you will have to probably check for all the possible bacteriological examinations by taking uh, an ulcer, ulcer. You have to take a small uh, material from the ulcer around the, around the edges of the ulcer also the base of the ulcer and send it for cultural sensitivity as to know what type of organism is actually infecting the cornea. So this is, a, you can empirically start with a, a 8 aminoclon floxin or a 4 aminoclon acid a derivative like moxifloxin or catifloxin, two are 8 aminoclon clones and then ultimately it goes into if it's treated or non-treated, it usually ends up in cicatrization. Cicatrization is nothing but scar formation. When the ulcer cicatrizes, there will be, an, a, again, the inside disorganized in a very, very <laughs> irregular manner. Once the cornea is damaged, it won't get, um, it won't get healed in such a proper manner. So all these lattices, which are very regularly situated in, in the entire cornea, they, what happens is they usually integrate in very irregular fashion. So there will be a lot of irregular astigmatism taking place or sometimes a leukoma uh, will be produced so that you will not have any permission for the light to enter into the pupillary area. Terminal cornea, corneal ulcer upon surveillance of the infected or host defense mechanism and the treatment is here. If you give the treatment, then you get regression. And later, when it infects the Bowman's membrane, that is the first membrane, Therefore, uh, when it is injured, it usually invariably causes a scar or a cicatrization. Stage of progressive infiltration, stage of active ulceration, stage of regression, and stage of cicatrization should be injured. Uh, this is a very famous and the most favorite uh, uh, oral question for all the examiners. All the undergraduates are requested to remember these four points. So this diabetes cicatrization means the vascularization will be there and then automatically there will be scar formation. So, leukocyte infiltration will go into regressive stage. You can get polymorphonucleoside uh, leukocyte infiltration. And leukocyte infiltration will change that, like that. Saucer shaped ulcer, we also eat uh, the, it also involves that particular part of the eye, uh, iris. And then these endotoxins which are produced there will go and irritate, go into the antechamber, seep into the antechamber. Thereby in the antechamber, they will uh, uh, make a, a small type of iritis type of thing on the iris. So the iris will start oozing proteinaceous material as a reflex for this ulcer, as a reflex. And then this particular thing will settle down with the orgasms because of hypopion. Hypopion is usually is labile in nature. That means it can move around in, the, in this way and that way in all the bacterial corneal ulcers, whereas it is very, very thick and gelatinous in the case of uh, fungal corneals because there will be fungal hype invading that hypopion. Hypopion is said to be first in the antechamber. Usually it is sterile in nature, bacterial corneal ulcer, but you can see fungal filaments or elements in 
the in case of uh, fungal cornealizers. Progress laterally, it just progresses laterally into the layers of the cornea and also deeper uh, into the other stroma uh, area. And then it stops just before, sometimes uh, before the desmus membrane. The desmus membrane is more tensile, more stronger, more, uh, more uh, stronger and elastic in nature. So it doesn't usually yield or give away. So this is how we, we, can, we can see Desmus is stopping the progress of the ulcer or progress on the cancer. So stage of digression is line of demarcations will be present, necrotic material is shed off, whatever necrotic material it will be present. This particular thing is should be looked at in fungal corneal ulcer where there will be a lot of necrotic material adherent onto the corneal ulcer surface that you have to debride it almost regularly, almost one or two days, you have to debride it with a small 15 uh, uh, blade. And then only you can, the uh, drops, whatever natamycin or whatever antifungal drops we give, will go and hit the organism, then only they can heal. So this necrotic material, usually in bacterial corneal ulcers, will shut off, giving a raw ulcer appearance. And it begins to heal, and there will be vascularization if you see carefully into the cornea. The epithelium only is involved. There is no injury to Bowman's membrane and superficial stroma. If it is Bowman's membrane involved, it's, it can produce nebula. Epithelium, epithelium only is involved. There is no scar. So small, small abrasions on the cornea. You can simply stain with fluorescein uh, stain and see uh, how far the fluorescein has gone in and by uh, using a a seat clamp that is called a biomicroscope. A microscope which can see living tissue is called a biomicroscope. So you, you come to the OP, you get any of the assistant processors will be able to see you how, how the cornea looks in, in a section in a biomicroscopic image. So if the macular, up to half of the stroma, if they are involved, woman's membrane is breached and half of the stroma is breached, that is called and it produces a macular type of a opacity in the cornea. What is macula? Macula is a small opacity, small, um, opaque opacity. Nebula is translucent in nature. So out of macula and nebula, the, the, the macular opacity can produce visual symptoms if it is situated exactly opposite to the pupil, whereas nebular opacity, if it is exactly opposite to the pupil, it can cause a lot of scattering of the light. Because nebulas, you have a lot of scatter of the light, and then you'll have more discomfort than macula, which is localizedly, but in particular area. So the present parapupillary area, or somewhere in the periphery, periphery of the cornea, mid periphery of the cornea, usually macular opacities will not produce any type of problems. Even if it is a small macular opacity in the center of the cornea also, if you dilate the pupil, the periphery of the cornea will be able to uh, refract the light and throw it onto the macula of the retina. Therefore, you will be able to have some amount of uh, vision with a little dimness because of the macular opacity in the center of the cornea. So about uh, two to three millimeters of the macular opacity can be managed that way. Otherwise, you will have to go for a penetrating keratoplasty. Leukoma. Leukoma is more than half the stroma or three-fourths of the cornea is gone. That means it is totally spoiled and then you get a very big uh, white opacity. The cornea which is which usually appears transparent will be totally becomes white. Because the, the, uh, the lattice structure and all the transparency is lost. So you have to remember this is it can also sometimes produce small, small dot-like um, facets. Facets are small dot-like impressions on the cornea. These can also be looked at when you see uh, leukomatous corneal ulcer. Leukomata, leukoma is only a stage of cicatrization. When this can also sometimes get small facets, they are, they are usually confused with ulcers, but no. 
active ulceration will produce some type of circumcarnial condition, the pain, the other things, such as uh, uh, congenital condition, all these things. Without anything, you can see a white cornea with small, small facets, which can be sometimes take up stain. It usually is not of any ulcer, but they are called a corneal facets. So, nebula, macula, leukoma, say three, four, and adherent leukoma. What is adherent leukoma? Once the corneal ulcer proceeds almost to the desmet membrane and also to the endothelium, if there the endothelium will become very sticky. It retracts the iris onto the cheeky endothelium. Therefore, the one part of the pupillary area point will get adherent to the uh, where exactly the leukoma is there. That's called the adherent leukoma. This is a very important thing. Adherent leukoma will be asked in your examinations. Pathogenesis we have seen. Then uh, this uh, is our thing. Clinical picture, outcome different surveillance of the organism. Virulent corneals without hyperpan or hyperpan corneal ulcer. Hyperpan is a one situation where the corneal ulcer also stimulates the uveal tract. Therefore, the exudation is usually called as hyperpan. It is it's got a transparent line, a, a meniscus, a straight meniscus. Whereas in fungal ulcers, it can have a convex meniscus sometimes. And in fungal ulcers, hyperpan usually is not shifted with the portion of the head. This is called hypopan corneal ulcer. Can you see the hypopan? This is the ulcer. Okay. This is the hypo. It looks like a fungal ulcer. Because when I talk about the fungal ulcer, I tell you what are the most important characteristics of the fungal ulcer. So, Symptoms are pain, watering, photophobia, blood vision, deadness of the eyes, you know, all this and so on. Liprospasm will be there. Chemo scanning to a corneal ulcer, pepan pus in the antechamber, again another, and chemosis. So, I'll talk something about <clears throat> fungal corneal ulcers. So, These facets I was talking to you about, sometimes they produce a lot of problem in the vision. There is a small facet. And fungal corneal ulcers, they are called as fungal keratitis or mycotic corneal ulcer. I don't know, I have this in my slides. Well. Okay, don't talk anyway. You understand these pictures are not necessarily there everywhere in your books. Okay. Then I'll talk about the complication. These usually are typically produced, these fungal corneal ulcers are typically in <coughs> rural setup. They are usually the rural setup, not in the city setup where they work with the uh, they work with uh, usually they work with uh, vegetables, vegetable farm body. The most important uh, organisms, as you write down, usually they are most often produced in immunocompromised individuals who work in the fields. So they are usually a village. Village is important place. So ask about history, where do you come from? We'll say, I come from Raivaram, I come from uh, that particular uh, village, like Amdal also, those things. Therefore, you will know that the parts probably must have had a fungal corneal ulcer. That the most important uh, are commonly due to Aspergillus, Lucerium, and Candida albicans. These things should be remembered. Aspergillus, Lucerium, and Candida albicans. Candida albicans for corneals are less common, but Fusarium 
and uh, our aspergillus are very, very common on an ulcer, fungal coronary ulcers. Mode of infection typically occurs when there is an injury with a uh, green uh, or a thorn or a wooden piece or anything relatively indolent in nature. And you remember one thing, when you're comparing with the bacterial coronary ulcer and fungal coronary ulcer, fungal coronary ulcer's eyes look white. Not so, so much the signs and symptoms are disproportionate to the presentation. That means the patient does not complain of severe pain, patient does not have so much of redness of the eye, but still he has what a very big ulcer. Compared to the big ulcer, there will not be any big manifestations. So that is usually a very typical of the fungal or carnal ulcers. Okay. And the ulcer, when you see the, a little bit elevation will be there, there will be a, 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 usually um, it has a very dry appearance with feathery borders and satellite lesions. Feathery borders and a feather with this it looks like feathers. Whereas the bacterial gonorrhea are usually circumscribed in nature. They are so nicely, uh, the, the periphery of the ulcer looks quite nice. Whereas here you can see they are all feathery. They are not very good. And they can, you can see satellite lesions. You see the satellite lesion? They are lesions away from the main ulcer and it's quite irregular. It's very irregular. And then it is, looks like very lardacious, quite uh, thick. Uh, and then you will know that it has uh, an uh, ulcer. And um, this demarcation usually depends to that. What happens is there will be small demarcation around this and then there will be immunological reaction. It's called the immunological being ring. Sometimes there will be demarcation where the uh, leukocytes and polymers fight there and then it is a fungal antigen antibody reaction factor. We call this ring of Wies Wesley, immune ring of Wesley. Immune ring of Wesley is very, very characteristic. It is an immunological ring and it should not be confused with anything else. And there is a hypopoyan. There is a greater, um, greater height of hypopoyan which is immobile in nature. And it, uh, when you take a, a small part of the hypopoyan through a syringe and try to analyze it, you find cells as well as you find fungal hypo or uh, fungal elements in the, uh, this uh, particular uh, hypopoyan. So that is not sterile. It is a fungal hypopoyan. So only when the uh, ulcer decreases, only the hypopoyan will slowly come down. It is very difficult and uh, satellite lesions may also be seen and marked congestion, but symptoms of pain, watering, photophobia are disproportionately less in case of bacterial gonorrhea. Now we understand how to differentiate between bacterial gonorrhea and fungal gonorrhea. These two types of cases are very, very common. And third thing is herpetic keratitis, which in the next class. Then, suppose a, 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 a and also cornea, uh, when, it, uh, he, when, when it reaches such a stage that it goes very deep into the stroma, and then after the stroma is finished, there will be a desperate complaint, it will be elastic in nature. So it has thinned down in that particular area where there is intraocular pressure, it will be somewhat around 20, 18 to 24, 22 millimeters of mercury. So it is usually if it is higher than the atmospheric pressure, automatically there will be a small bulge. It's called a small desmatocyte. Desmond membrane will produce a knuckle-like thing projecting into the deficiency of the corneal. It's called a desmatocyte. And along with the desmatocyte, it is also called as a keratocyte. It is, it is, there is a small hydrocyte-like thing in, in the substance of the cornea. That is a desmatocyte, or it is otherwise called as a keratocyte. So sometimes uh, when it cannot take the problem or uh, thing, when uh, the person sneezes or uh, coughs or uh, strains at the um, per bowel movement, or if there is a sudden trauma to the eye, in such kind of weak eye, what happens is there the is a sudden increase in the intraocular pressure, and then suddenly that desmotocyl will use away 
you know, all the con- intraocular contents will have a anterior mode shift of the lens iris diaphragm. <coughs> lens iris diaphragm will suddenly go forward, and then the lens will part. Uh, lens part, uh, front part of the lens will touch. Iris will touch, and then there will be automatically if there is a small perforation, the front part of the iris will get. Uh, um what you what i call it as um, entrapment a small part of the pupil the margin will be entrapped in the ulcer that's called as what is that called as anybody the allowed to that suppose uh, uh, a, a girl going through um a door okay suddenly there is such a gush of wind that her chunni gets tapped in the uh, door that's the type of uh, picture it gives when the iris gets tapped in the perforated cornea okay just for your illustration i told you that will prolapse of the iris and then the whole of the uh, iris uh, and the uh, iris lens uh, the whole of the diaphragm shifts uh, the periphery of the iris shifts the center part of the iris or pupil shifts and then it can produce a anterior synecia posterior synecia are behind the pupil anterior synecia are which performed on the corneal endothelium or sometimes the iris gets stuck up in onto the endothelial cornea and then it can give you a type of corneal anterior synecia they block in the perforation and iris uh, perforation and then the bigger the iris is very rich in uh, vasculature it usually supplies the particular blocks the corneal perforation and then it starts healing and the perforation happens the patient does not have pain suddenly there will be decrease of the pain uh, all of a sudden because uh you can suspect that the, the perforation i this is perfect yesterday he was complaining of too much of pain suddenly he stands in the bowel uh, at a, a late or something like that therefore suddenly when we come for the next day rounds he says the absolute pain is totally over there no more pain sir then you look at the fellow he usually end up with a corneal perforation with the iris prolapse or so that is so when it is it is prolapsed and the color the iris soon become obscure by deposition of gray and yellow excrete upon upon the surface so that excretion wherever there is incarceration of the iris incarceration ante endaga nenu cheppinattu anamata it been between two layers of the cornea the iris got stuck it produces some type of small ischemia so that it gives excretion at excretion will produce a deposition of gray and white yellow is excretion on surface even in the iris storm we can thin and black pigmented epithelium we can see so, so elagana belly after stuck up ayipote the iris will be losing its pigment so it will be pigmented out to the yellowish out to so it can have varied appearances when there is a knuckle of iris projecting through the corneal opening as called as iris flaps and then how does uh, lens have what happens to lens lens is that when it touches there is shift of the anterior branch anterior uh, shift lens touches the endothelium wherever it touches touches the endothelium because the lens chamber is totally flat the anterior chamber is totally become flat so the lens touches the uh, endothelium it gets opacified so anti subcapsular opacities or sometimes lenticular opacities are commonly seen in such kind of anterior capsular cataract is very common sometimes what happens is the whole thing uh, the lot of iris will come and incarcerate into the corneal stroma into the a large cells in the large cells of perforates what happens is the whole of the anterior uh, uh, whole of the iris gets incarcerated into the uh, the particular ulcer and then it produces then there will be uh, stromal fibers will come and form an inter between so it looks like a bunch of grapes that's called as anterior stephanoma 
or corneo corneo iridial scar. So cornea and iris will produce a scar. Both elements are there. So it's called as a bunch of grapes, or it is also looks like a bunch of there. It's called as anterior stephanoma. So that you have to remember. Okay. Then corneal fistula develops sometimes when the ulcer does not heal, gets perforated. What to do for corneal fistula? Nowadays, what we are doing is we are taking uh, a, a substance called as hydroxy aptide or a small uh, what you call fibric quick. You can see fibric quick. It is almost similar in nature. They, they take with a small spatula. The underneath the spatula, they'll have this, and then go on and apply onto the cornea for a second or for five to 10, 30 seconds. It becomes a, a, a seal. Then totally the when it gets sealed, the total anterior chamber again will form. There's no leak. So corneal fistulas are generally taken care like that, and you put a, a bandage type of contact lens. Contact lens which will give a support to the cornea. And then we give anti anti glaucomatous medication so as to uh, decrease the pressure from behind. Uh, so we give uh, antimolal malate, and sometimes we have to give dimox tablets, that is, estrazolamide, 250 times, three times a day, to decrease the back pressure from, which is coming from backside, so that much of the inter inside of the eye will not touch. You see, the anti sample is formed, therefore the ulcer will automatically heal, before we, we treat. So I will tell you one more point is, the bacterial corneal ulcers quickly perforate. You treat, even if you treat also, the bacterial corneal ulcers quickly perforate. Here you need to know one thing. Ofloxin is a drug. Ofloxin is one of the drugs. Moxifloxin is a drug. Agatifloxin is a drug. The most commonly used is moxifloxin and gatifloxin. Ofloxin is supposed to increase the incidence of corneal perforations. Remember, ofloxin is not the drug of choice. When you see a deep, deep ulcer, you should always prescribe moxifloxin or gatifloxin. But you have to prescribe your own uh, fortified uh, drops with uh, other gentamicin type of things, imic and such kind of things. You can prepare a fortified drop. That's a different subject altogether. Then uh, when iris total prolapse occurs, it can sometimes it can produce uh, uh, so much, and then uh, it produces a type of pseudo cornea. The whole thing, the ulcer has perfected so much, iris comes, and then it looks black. So the whole cornea is full of blackish pigmentation, and the iris structures uh, occasionally interlace here and there with fibrillar material derived from corneal stroma. Uh, therefore, it looks like a um, like a pseudo cornea. It's not a cornea, but the iris totally is uh, full of x ray. What do you say? Formed because of x ray. X ray is black. Uh, uh, x ray is full of pigment. And it looks like a pseudo cornea. So sometimes what happens, the pressure is so much inside. Nobody knows that long term when we discharge the corneal separation, we usually ask them to take care of the house. If they don't take care, then the whole of the thing uh, will rupture totally in such a violent manner that the whole, whole intraocular contents, along with the lens, the vitreous, everything uh, will come out through the lens and then it will be a disaster. And sometimes the vessels also will be dragged along the retinal vessel. Because expulsive hemorrhage. Expulsive hemorrhage is very, very related to complication. And we are doing complications. And then when the periphery of the antechamber also closes, it can cause glaucoma. That's called a very incalcitrant glaucoma. Because three fourths of the uh, iris, when it touches and becomes adherent to the periphery part of the cornea, it can cause a glaucoma. That means there's all the intraocular tension. And therefore, it can also. Uh, give rise to irreversible blindness due to the rays of intraocular tension of glaucoma. Sometimes, if the ulcer is left like that, 
it can invade the inside of the eye. It deeper penetrates deeper and deeper, and when it touches the vitreous, and can cause and touches the iris, and then cause a brilliant type of discharge. Ultimately, it can land up with a brilliant aldo cyclitis, endophthalmitis, and sometimes you'll have to remove the end of the total eyeball of the eyes. These are the important uh, treatments uh, uh, complications of corneal cancer. Sometimes. Six minutes. Okay, we will quickly go through the treatment of the corneal ulcer. The tropical drugs are treatment of choice. Antibacterials like moxifloxin and gatifloxin should be instilled at drops because systemic antibiotics do not have any effect. So systemic antibiotics usually are not given unless it is having so much of a uh, indication, like systemic infection getting into corneal ulcer. Whereas in you know, all uh, tropical fungal corneal ulcer, no, atropine should be instilled in case of all corneal ulcer. Iris should be dilated. The pupil should be dilated. And once you dilate, atropine gives rise to in the form of 1% ointment or drops. It doesn't matter. It should be given at least three times a day so that it relaxes the ciliary muscle it relaxes, prevents the duct, prevents silly spasm, and forces out some of the dangerous cells of iritis, prolapse of the iris through the corneal uh, uh, thing. And then also, always, uh, <coughs> sinic will not be a problem. The iris does not get adhered onto the lens because it is dilated, people dilated. These are some of the important things. Most comfort is offered by local heat. You have to ask the person to have local heat. So you take a small cloth and then put it in hot water, dip it, squeeze it and then try to apply so that it increases the blood circulation. And also when the blood circulation increases, what happens is toxins are taken over into the bloodstream and then they'll be killed by the antibiotic. So th this is one way of treating. So sometimes if, if it is a small thing um, which is producing a big scar or something like that, Late, when the infection is totally under control only, you must uh, involve use of steroids. Otherwise, steroids will increase the uh, ulcer to progress so rapidly. The steroids are said to be contraindicated for all undergraduate study purpose, except in corneal ulcers, which are exactly in pupillary area, which are responding very, very well to the anti biotic uh, ointment or the drops. <clears throat> Usually drops, nobody should be administered. And slowly they have to reduce as far as the, and whenever we can observe that there is a regression of the ulcer. And then and topical drugs for uh, corneal ulcers because of fungus. Usually there are usually lotal natamycin, boriconazole, and amphotericin B are effective against aspergillus and fusarium. These two things I told you, candida is not so common. These two things are very important. But one one note about uh, uh, this uh, atomycin local eye drops is, is a very convenient instill. It is a broad spectrum antifungal. It's a broad spectrum. It kills almost everything, whatever is available by natamycin. So natamite eye drops are available in all the OPs to uh, treat uh, and systemic antifungal should also be given like uh, ketoconazole and voriconazole in specified doses for the ulcer. If it is having severe hypoion and perforation, if suspected, suspicion of endophthalmitis, fungal endophthalmitis, in such cases, you have to give a systemic antifungal too. And surgical mechanism is a scrapping of the spatula Answer may be cauterized and therapeutic can the plastic. Is that done? How do you do cauterization? Pure carbolic acid, that is 500% carbolic acid, and trichloroacetic acid are taken. Acetic acid is 10 to 20%. Hmm. 
carbon has uh, the advantage of penetrating a little deeper than they actually applied. So, usually fungal hyphae go a little deeper. So, this is particular thing. It's antiseptic properties can be used widely, and uh, the cartilization is gently done, and uh, thinning excessively thin areas are usually prevented. And you can do the edges of cartilization. This is one method. And nowadays you can do it with uh, ovidine, the five percent ovidine iodine is a good alternative. So ultrasonographically, all the answers should be checked. If there is, and it has developed in endophthalmitis by seeing for any echoes in the intravitreal. Sometimes it is uh, developing into endophthalmitis, fungal, fungal endophthalmitis. Etc. You must go into the bacteria by doing intravitreal injection of amphotericin B. And that's very important along with antibiotic, intravitreal antibiotic. So have, we have to take a this tab, send for culture and sensitivity, know which type of fungus it is. And so also stain with the um, uh, uh, stain and see uh, to see whether or not what type of fungus is that is very easy to diagnose types of fungus under microscopy. And then uh, they you have to incubate in subarts medium, and, and it is a specific fungal medium. That's it. Management of annual scar can be done with annual grafts, and then lamellar keratoplasty. Or if it is not to removed by lamellar keratoplasty, you probably have to do a full thickness corneal keratoplasty. And sometimes, if for cosmetic reason, if it is small, nimble, small opacity, macular opacity, or nimbular opacity. You can cosmetically improve the person's eye by tattooing, tattooing with the India ink or something like that. You can tattoo as with the Indian ink and impregnation of gold brown or platinum black. Usually, platinum black is used. India ink is not used nowadays. And they do a small drawing and then they do small punctures. In the puncture, they put a drop of uh, this India ink or platinum black. Therefore, the dots will imbibe this particular dye and then they become black. So, it becomes homogeneous in nature so that you will see that the garnier is having a uniform blackness instead of a small white patch. Okay. All the perforated ulcer is treated usually because of tissue, tissue adhesive that is N-butyl, 2-butyl, cyanoactylate monomer. That is what we see every day in our daily daily Heavy, quick, not very call. Heavy, quick, available in small tubes. You remember, it quickly freezes. It quickly gets hidden. So, so that is called very quick. It quickly does it. So you remember, that can be done. Five to ten minutes, uh, drying is already completed. And if the perforation larger than two to four millimeters, Corneal patch graft has to be done. That particular part where the disease has uh, uh, caused a problem there, that should be cut a little bit uh, for healthy margin. A small patch graft of the cornea can be soon in place and then treated with antibiotics so that it gives um, good thing. If it is perfectly more than four millimeters, a tectonic skeptoplasty. Is required. That means you are you have to move some part or small part away from that particular area. Try to uh, implant a tectonic. That means tectonic in one layer of the cornea, you will slide it over onto the cornea and then you can seal that particular operation. It should all be done in with the, the aid of antibiotics and uh, with much care taken by the surgeon. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, that means on Saturday, we are going to go for um, viral keratitis. It is a viral corneal illness. Thank you.